I remember in 2012 watching the US presidential elections and I remember seeing Ron Paul talk about US foreign policy and he was exposing what US were doing in Iraq and Afghanistan and all these things. Now, after that, I don't think I've ever heard a presidential candidate talk properly about foreign policy. Donald Trump did say that war in Iraq was unjustified, but he did also say that he would use torture and all these other things. So it wasn't like he was changing the US foreign policy. But then I saw this clip of US presidential candidate Marianne Williamson, and they were asking her about the reports of China helping train Cuban troops. It's a very interesting clip, and let me show you the clip before I say anything else. As president, what strategy would you employ to address China's recent ongoing negotiations with Havana about setting up a joint military training facility in Cuba? Do you know how many military bases we have surrounding China? 313. Americans need to wake up. It is a different world. We have about 750 military installations in 80 countries. The fact that other countries are saying, you're going to do that to us, we're going to start doing it to you. Uh, that's the world that we live in now. So I think that that's what China is saying, and China is basically taking that posture. I don't want to see Chinese military installations in, uh, uh, in Cuba, but uh, I also realize, as I'm sure Anthony Blinken and President uh, Biden uh, realize as well, it's a new day. You can't just go around telling people what to do. And um, there are enough military installations that should not exist uh, that are American in the world and that I would want to close, not at the, at the uh, expense of our safety. On the other hand, I don't believe the fact we have all those military bases is making us safer. I think that we have squandered. Our, our safety by this, this uh, militarization of the world. But they don't like the fact that we have so much going on in the South China Sea. Just like we don't like that they might be coming to, China, to Cuba. It's called a negotiation, and uh, that's the world today. Just a quick follow-up on that one, Ms. Williamson. Even though there are many more American military bases surrounding China, do you think there's a difference in intent between what America is trying to do and what China is trying to do with its bases? On one hand, now let's talk about this very seriously. On one hand, I'm not naive about China. Okay, nobody's naive about China. But look how the rest of the world sees this. The rest of the world is looking at Iraq. The rest of the world is looking at the last 20 years in Afghanistan. And do you think that they look at, and do you think that they see China as a greater military threat to global security or the United States as a greater military threat to global security? Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. As president, I will help this country look in the mirror. Uh, we have to look at how the rest of the world sees this. We are a multipolar world now. It is no longer unipolar. There was a time when America could just go around doing whatever we wanted, and we squandered our military authority by doing that. We squandered by our moral authority by doing that. We squandered our safety by doing that. We squandered the lives of our own men and women and people around the world by doing that. And at this point, we have to step back, become far more humble. We can't l continue to look at the world as everybody as an enemy. Apologies if the clip was too fast. Amazing speech. And she probably is the first US politician who came on the stage and said that we are living in a multipolar world. The first one who openly said it, the first one who's saying that, hey, the world has changed, maybe our policies need to also change and we need to become more humble. And I also like the fact that she pointed out that there was a time and place when the US could do whatever they want, but they squandered that opportunity. And I don't think they realized that after 9-11, the whole world was with them. China, Russia, no one else could even come close. They pretty much had no enemies, apart from some random Saudi Arabians living in Germany. But there was no countries opposing them. They could do whatever they want. And what they decided to do is invade so many countries that I cannot even name all of them. They did so much horrible things, and now everyone sees them for who they are. No one is looking at China thinking, oh, that is a threat. The only people who look at them as if US and China is the same level of threat to, for example, any African country or any Middle Eastern country is the Americans themselves. And that's why when the man asks that, do you think there's difference in intent? If you are doing the same exact thing, what do you mean intent? If you establish a military base next to a superpower you are competing against, by definition you are preparing for a war with that nation or you are trying to have military advantage against that country. So when China is in Cuba, they are doing the same thing as US is doing in Philippines or South China Sea or in Taiwan or whatever. I always 
find it very interesting how Americans could do things and they always say the same thing, but our intention was good. You can't just use that word. Action is what people see. No one cares about some noble idea that you had if your action causes death of people. But I do like the fact that she said it and I have to say very interesting to see and maybe in future there will be more people like her. Now I understand that she has about a 0% chance of winning but it's still interesting to see. But I don't think even Ron Paul had that big of a chance to win. And I think he still made a change in the way people were speaking about Iraq and Afghanistan in that presidential election. So it's good to see things like this.